Let's go over the nine things that you need to know to get started with the Arc Parse module today. The very first thing that you need to know about the Arc Parse module is what it does. If you have a Python script that uses a graphical user interface, you can control your script by hitting the buttons on the GUI. But what if you don't have a UI? and maybe you're running your script from the command line. Well, in that case, you need to provide a CLI or a command line interface for your script to allow the users of your script to tell the script what to do. And this is where the arc parse module comes in. It allows us to define a CLI for your script. Let's take a look at how this looks in the script. So I have some boilerplate code here and I'm gonna start adding the arc parse functionality. First things first, let's import arc parse. Now I have that imported, let's create an arc parser. This is going to create the arc parse object and then I'm going to add a description and I'm going to add a line to parse the args. We're going to come back to this line in a bit. Everybody can benefit from a tour guide when visiting a new city and arc parse allows us to provide a guide for the users of our scripts. It automatically generates a help section which we can see right now. Let's run our script from the command line and add a minus minus help argument. And you can see with just a few lines, we already have this functionality. We didn't ask arc parse to provide the minus minus help option, but it's already there. And you can see that the description of our script is already provided. Our current help message doesn't have a lot of things just yet, but we'll be working on that in this video. Here's an example of what it might look later in the video. Next on our list are positional arguments. Imagine a recipe for a delicious cake. To make that cake, you need to provide the required ingredients in a specific order. Positional arguments enable us to define the required parameters and communicate to the user in which order they need to provide them in. For example, an input file that your script will use to execute its functionality. Let's add a positional argument in our script. I'm going to use the parser variable and then call the add argument method and I need to provide the name of this positional argument like that and I need to provide a help message for this argument like that. Now let's run our script and see what happens. And now you can see the updated help message now shows that we have a required positional argument and a help message defining what exactly that argument stands for. On the other hand, optional arguments allow your users to modify the behavior of your script. Let's say you have a hammer in your toolbox, and unless you have anger management issues, you probably don't want to be using that hammer to fix everything in your house. It's an optional tool. Same thing goes for optional arguments. It allows us to control what parts of the script run. Now let's define a couple of optional arguments in our script. I'm going to use the parser variable again, and then I'm going to use the add argument one more time. And now with the name of our argument, I'm going to use the minus minus in front of the name, like so, to tell arc parse that this is an optional argument. Let's provide a help message. Now this is a definition of an optional argument. We can also provide default values in case the user doesn't set this optional argument. And we're going to use the default keyword argument to define that, like this. Let's create a second optional argument. In the case of optional arguments, you could provide a short version of that optional argument so the user doesn't have to type a lot of characters. And you'll just use one dash. Then let's provide a second longer name for our optional argument. And of course provide the help so we can update our help message on the command line. Also you don't have to ask the user for a value for your optional argument. You can make your argument into a flag. And to do that we can add a simple action like this. And now the user just has to use the longer or shorter version of this optional argument and that's it. Think of it as a light switch, on or off. Let's take a look at our updated help message. And you can see that now we have options here with optional argument one and then the optional argument two. You can see that the second optional argument doesn't require us to provide a value, but the first one does. ArcParse allows us to set the data type for each argument. Just like in a recipe, each ingredient has its own use and properties. The data type of our arguments allows ArcParse to extract the right information and warn our users that they've provided the wrong value. Let's add an argument with a data type. I'm going to call this optional argument jobs and set the type to int. 
and of course provide the help message, like so. And to make sure that the users of your script like using your script, make sure to like this video. Sometimes we make mistakes and we forget things. And ArcParse allows us to catch those issues and tell our users that they've provided incorrect information or they are missing something. Let's go ahead and run our script without providing any arguments. You can see that our script is telling us that we forgot a required positional argument, which is the file path. Let's rerun our script and provide a path. It doesn't have to exist at this point. It's just for this example. It's gonna be an input txt. And now I'm gonna to try to use the job optional argument and provide text instead of an integer, like that. And you can see that our script is telling us that the job optional argument requires an integer. Test is not an integer. Next is parsing or extracting the arguments our users have provided. Think of reading a manual for assembling some furniture. When you read that manual, you extract concrete actions that you need to take to assemble that furniture. ArcParse has the parsing functionality and it extracts and organizes the information that users have provided for us in a way that our script can take concrete actions. And if we're looking at our script, exactly this line right here does all that magic. Let's actually update this line and make sure that we get the result of that parse, like so. So now the args variable is gonna contain all the information the users have provided. After gathering all that input from our users and organizing it in a nice way, ArcParse allows us to access that information in an easy way. Think of it as receiving packages for your online orders. You need to open each package up to see what exactly is inside. Let's update our script to see what's inside of our arguments. Let's print out the arguments that the user has provided. I'm gonna use the args variable. So I'm gonna access the required positional argument, which is the file path. Next, I'm gonna access the optional argument, then the second optional argument, and then the job optional argument. Now let's our, run our script from the command line and see what it prints. I'm gonna use the second optional argument, and then I'm also gonna set the job to three. And you can see that the positional argument is input, some default text. We didn't use the first optional argument. The second optional argument is set to true because it's just the flag and the value of the job optional argument is three. Pretty neat, right? Now, if for some reason you don't like the names of the optional arguments, you can provide your own custom name to override what we're gonna be using when we're accessing the data. So if you use the desk keyword argument, you can provide your custom name. So I'm just gonna name it opt1. And instead of optional one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use that opt1. Let's go ahead and rerun our script. And you can see that our script still works. Swiss Army Knives can contain multiple tools in one neat package. They can have different modes of operation depending on what tool you select. ArcParse allows you to create a Swiss Army Knife out of your script, allowing you to define different modes of operation. Let's go ahead and add some modes to our script. The modes are gonna be defined by sub parsers and I'm gonna update our script in a way that the required positional argument is gonna be used in both modes, but the optional arguments are gonna be split in between those two modes. So I'm gonna define a new variable called sub parsers, which will allow us to define the sub parsers. And I'm gonna use the sub parsers method, provide a help and a name to allow us to access which mode we select like that. Let's define our first sub parser. I'm gonna call it CMD. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the parser with the CMD parser for the first optional argument. Now I'm gonna define a second mode and just kind of call it run like that. And then again, use the run parser for the rest of our optional arguments. Now I'm gonna just print out the args and I'm gonna just print out the sub parser name. This is how the script is gonna look. Let's go ahead and run our script with a help option. You can see that our optional arguments are now hidden under the modes and we can really only see the documentation or the modes that we've created. 
to see the help message for a given mode, let's provide our input file and then select one of the modes and add the help argument at the end. So I'm gonna ask about the CMD and then minus minus help. And you can see for the CMD mode, we have optional argument one. And if I do the same thing for the run mode, you can see that we have the rest of the optional args. All right, I hope you learned something new today. And for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.